Hi, welcome back to Mondays with Madeline. Today we're going to be doing a review of the book Whole30. Um, Whole30 is now fairly widely known as a diet, um, but its primary goal is not necessarily to lose weight, but to retrain your body into eating whole foods. And the, the diet is 30 days long, and then after that you can slowly introduce you know, foods that are not on the, uh, the no-go list from this. Um, the, the author is Melissa Hartwig and Dallas Hartwig. Um, they should be very proud of this book, I think. Um, as far as, as, as books go, diets, they have so many different, different factors involved in them. And this book does a very, very good job of describing to you exactly what's going to happen during your diet. It has an entire day-to-day -day process section on here where it's going to tell you all the goods and the bads of exactly what, how your body's going to feel, the way you're going to react to it. Um, there's a hangover portion of this, of this diet where you feel like you've got a headache and you feel cranky and, and, it's, and it's hard because you're, you're stopping yourself from eating these, um, the sugars and the carbs and things like that that you normally eat, those easy energy items that your body tends to crave. Um, I think that's really, really cool that they've done so well with this. It's gone into a lot of details and described a lot of items and additives and things that you're looking out for, things that you're not supposed to have. Um, I will say that the rules of the Whole30 diet are very strict. It's a difficult diet to do. You have to meal plan when you do this diet. Um, and it tells you that you should meal plan because it's hard and it's hard to go out to eat because there's so many of the different additives and things that are in food that you don't even know about. And when you're going to the grocery store and you're shopping and you're buying products, there are things in our food that you're not thinking about. So reading labels and all of that goes hand in hand with this diet. It's all about being healthy. So I'm gonna read you the rules of this diet real quick because there are quite a few and they're very specific. Um, the first one is do not consume added sugar of any kind, real or artificial. And there's a list of what that includes. Maple syrup, honey, agave nectar, coconut sugar, Splenda, Equal, NutraSweet, Xylitol, Stevia. All of these things are in so many of the products we have and you would think honey and maple syrup and agave nectar, like those are things that healthy people who are on healthy diets per se use in their food. The next thing is you can't consume alcohol of any kind, nothing, no wine, beer, liquor, whatever, you can't drink it. Um, your next thing is no grains, which is normal, you know, your, your average bread and that sort of thing, but there, there's a couple things on here that you wouldn't expect, and one of them is corn and rice. You can't have any of those, any sprouted grains or um, pseudo cereal, gluten-free pseudo cereals like, like amaranth, buckwheat, or quinoa, none of those. Um, nothing with added wheat, corn, or rice um, products, as well as brand German starches. Read your labels. Once again, this is really important that you read your later, labels on, on all of these. Your next item is you can't eat legumes. Um, that's beans. And literally it means every kind of bean you can think of. Black beans, red beans, pinto, navy, white, kidney, lima, fava, no peas, chickpeas, lentils, peanuts, no peanut butter, no forms of soy. And soy is one that is in a lot of our foods. The list of soy products is insane. So you can't have soy sauce, miso, tofu, tempeh, edamame, um, no, no foods that have soybean oil or soy lecithin in them. So once again, this goes back to reading your labels. You have to check everything. The one exception to this entire bean rule is that you're allowed to have green beans, snow peas, and sugar snap peas. I'm assuming that's because they're more like vegetables and not beans per se. Um, um, and then we go to dairy. You can't have any dairy at all. Absolutely zero dairy. No cow, goat, sheep milk, no cream cheese, no cream, no, no kefir, yogurt, sour cream. The only thing you can do is you can have ghee or clarified butter. Um, I, think, I think that is part of it because you can, when you make ghee or clarified butter, you're like separating the, the sol fat solids. Um, so no carrageenan, MSG, or added sulfites. These are all ingredients that are in a lot of processed foods. So those are things that you don't necessarily know that you're eating, but they're in a lot of beverages as well. So check your labels once again. Um, don't recreate baked goods like treats or junk food type items. So don't make banana egg pancakes, almond flour muffins, paleo bread, or coconut milk ice cream. 
Those are just a, some examples that um, they give in this book. Um, your cravings and habits won't change if you keep eating these foods. And that's the point to this diet, is changing your cravings and your habits. Um, it's very, very important if you're going to go ahead and commit to this type of lifestyle that you follow these directions. You're also not supposed to step on the scale or take measurements while you're doing this because the, the focus isn't on your, your body fat and how much weight you're losing. The focus is on changing your, your lifestyle. Um, with that all being said, even if you're not going to go ahead and do the Whole30 diet and you just like to eat healthy, I really suggest getting this book. I never ended up doing this diet. Um, I, I'm, a, I'm a professional chef and I work with too many foods and I have to taste too many things and I have to check all the food that goes out of my kitchen. So um, I can't always trust my, uh, you know, the other cooks in the kitchen to, to make sure it's right. Um, but this, diet, this book has a lot of really wonderful recipes with great flavor combinations and easy ways of, of putting healthy food back into your lifestyle that are gonna be family friendly. A lot of these recipes I, I have no problem serving to my children and my husband. I think they're great and they're very detailed and they have a lot of different sauces and, um, and recipes for even drinks in here that I think are really, really fantastic. So we're gonna go ahead and start our recipe for that I, that I chose to do for this. Um, it is a, I'm doing a kebab skewer, beef kebabs, with uh, chimichurri sauce. So one of the things I like about this is that they have the chimichurri sauce recipe in this book as well. We're going to start with that because our, um, our meat's going to have to marinate for one to eight hours. The longer you do it, the better it is. The meat that they suggest you do use for, for this recipe is a lean steak of some kind, so sirloin, strip, or flank steak. Um, in my case, we, we got a, a sirloin, and then... We're going to go over to page 306, our chimichurri sauce. I think this chimichurri sauce is a really, it's got a lot of really great ingredients in it. I think it's pretty solid. Um, we're going to, once you make this, it'll last in the refrigerator for a couple of days. So it's something that you can put on more than just your skewers. You can use it on, on just regular steak or even pork. Um, it's a really great sauce for a lot of different things. All right, so this this recipe is fairly simple. Um, the first couple of ingredients we're gonna we're gonna do is um, add our vinegar. It's a quarter cup of red wine vinegar, and then a quarter cup of fresh lime juice. I'm gonna go ahead and roll my limes to get them nice and juicy. Juicing limes, watch your eyes. If you squeeze it the wrong way, you're gonna shoot yourself in the eye. pour our lime juice straight into in with our vinegar as well and then the next thing we need is two cloves of garlic which apparently I forgot to get out one of the most important things when you're cooking is to always remember to pull all your, all your stuff out of the refrigerator we call it, in French cooking, we call it mise en place. It's everything in its place. You get all your ingredients together and have everything set up, and then you could just, you could just work and not having to, not worry about having to find things. If you've never cooked with shallots before, shallots are great. They're in the onion family. If you could find them already uh, peeled, that's the best, but sometimes you can't and you have to peel them yourself. This recipe calls for only a half of one. I'm 
gonna go ahead and give this a couple little chops here just to make it mix in easier. Now that we've got those in, I'm going to go ahead and close this up um, and pull my, my, little, my little thing out here. We're going to be doing one and a half cups of extra virgin olive oil in this. It doesn't suggest a specific kind of extra virgin olive oil to use. Pick your favorite. Use whatever you like. All right, we're going to go ahead and turn this on, and then we'll, we're going to start slowly... Slowly drizzling in some of our oil. And basically we're looking for this to start to emulsify. So far, we're going to keep going. We're going to put a little bit more, and we want to start to kind of get a little bit thick. We're going to stop there. If you don't have a food processor to do this, and you can always do it in a blender, that'll work just fine too. Um, the next thing we need is about a quarter cup of cilantro. I'm going to eyeball this because why not? Try not to get too, too many of the big stems in it. And I'm going to go just a little bit heavier on my cilantro for this recipe because I really love cilantro. And then you also need a quarter cup of parsley. Don't use the curly parsley when you do a recipe like this. Get the flat leaf or Italian parsley. The curly parsley doesn't really have any flavor at all. And when you're making an herb sauce like this, you, I mean, the whole point is to have flavor. I mean, you just can't, you can't get anything out of the curly parsley at all. I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of salt and pepper in this. Um, the recipe calls for half a teaspoon of both salt and pepper. Stop that one more time just to pour out my, my other half a cup of olive oil. You don't want to overheat your sauce when you're making an emulsified sauce like this or, or it'll break. Smells really good. It looks really good. I like the color on it. Now, 
what I'm curious about is how it tastes. Taste the consistency. It's got a good consistency, but the sauce isn't broken. It's pretty good. I'm going to add a little extra salt to mine, actually. A little, little dash of pepper. And I'm just going to go ahead and stir those in. And that's a preference thing. Anytime you make any of these recipes, I'm a big fan of my recipes. I like to put salt and pepper to taste. Because some people taste, you know, taste differently. If you're not, if you don't like using salt a whole lot, you like your food to, you know, offense, be bland, then you can use always use less salt. All right, and the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna cut up our steak and put it into a plastic bag where we're gonna dump some of this chimichurri sauce to marinate it. Let me go back to my other recipe. All right, so you're supposed to use one pound. I got a big old piece, it's much larger than a pound. But we're going to just go with it. So once again, this is going to be a, this is going to be on a skewer. So you want to um, cut them into like one inch, one inch dices. I'm going to go ahead and cut off this edge of fat right here. It's pretty thick. You don't really want to eat that on there. have our meat all cut up. I'm going to go ahead and take out my blade in here and scrape that. The recipe in the book suggests you pour about a cup worth of, of this, of the chimichurri sauce onto your meat. Does it have any suggestions? Basically just says you want to coat it thoroughly. So we get, definitely have plenty in there to do it. One of the reasons why they're doing it this way is because this sauce, um, especially because of the acid that's in it, is going to help tenderize this meat. So um, it suggests to marinate it in this for one to eight hours or overnight. The longer you do it, the more flavor you're going to get. So this can be one of those meal prep items where you start the, you know, the day before and then cook it the next day. There we go. I've got mine all in there. I'm going to stick it in the refrigerator and in a couple of hours, we're going to go ahead and pull it out and we're going to make our kebabs. Now that our meat has marinated, um, I've got it in a bowl over here, and I've got all of our veggies that are going to be on our skewer chopped up and ready to go. We're going to go ahead and just start assembling them. I've got metal skewers, but if you don't have metal skewers and you are using the bamboo ones, um, make sure that you soak your bamboo skewers in water for 30 minutes before you use them, otherwise they just kind of burn up like crazy. Um, 
It doesn't matter what order you put anything on these. Um, I'm going to start with, with my steak. All right, now that we have our kebabs made, they're a beautiful color, I love them. I'm going to go ahead and get them on our grill. If you're doing this on your outside grill, um, it probably gets a little bit hotter than, than this one does. In that case, um, the book recommends that you start it on a really high heat and then drop the temperature down as you go. On this, in this application, I'm just going to kind of see and see how it works out. chimichurri all over your your kebabs on your plate. It's a fantastic recipe. It's very simple. Not over the top. I love it. This is a recipe recipe that I would highly recommend to anybody whether you're on a diet or not. It's just, it's great flavors, simple, easy to do, easy to recreate, and also easy to add different things to it. Like I said, you can put mushrooms on these, whatever. So that's about it for this one. Please like us and subscribe, and we'll be coming at you with more videos.